G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. Today, we are going to be taking a look at some of the greatest AFL sledges. And I'm here. Drizzy, these days the AFL just seems like such a corporatized, clean cut environment. And I always, always wonder, what's it actually like on the field? What are mm. players saying to each other? You, you can sort of try and lip read a few times a little bit, but you always wonder, what are the, what are the actual dirty little things? Mm. <laughs> well, maybe not dirty little things. What sweet nothings are they whispering in <laughs> others' ears? This is very inclusive, inclusive. Oh, feelings. Oh, don't expose the players to saying bad things in the media. Oh, yeah. I want to hear what they're saying, because they'll, they'll be saying some dusty things. Mm. I reckon. You hear about a lot of these things sort of like after players retire, I guess, because mm. you don't want to sort of out someone on the field as well. But I think, I wonder if sledging was just better back in the day. But today, we're going to be taking a look at uh, some articles and things I've found online about evidence of the, some of the best AFL sledges between players of eras gone by. Enjoy vigorously. I'm going to read the, the sledges to Jersey, and we're going to rate them out of 10 based on, you know, how funny they are, how brutal they are, and also how witty they are. Jersey, what do you look for in a sledge? I just like making someone feel as inferior as, as possible. Just make them feel this big. And it's got to be funny as well. You can't just be like, you suck. You are absolutely terrible. Ne needs a punchline on the end of it. Like, <laughs> you suck. You are terrible. Go live in a bin. Some of these That'd are, be a good example. Some of these on this list aren't that bad, but we're gonna we're gonna rate them and tear them apart. For me, I, I prefer witty. It doesn't have to be brutal, but if it if it's a thinker, it may be yeah. it's, it's, <laughs> if it's a thinker, it's not a stinker. So let's get into it. I'm gonna start reading them out. So the first one is Andrew Mackey of Geelong apparently loudly said against North Melbourne to his teammates, do we get four points for this win or do we get just two? Is that saying like North Melbourne suck yeah, or something? Yeah, like you shouldn't get as many points because North Melbourne suck. <laughs> See, he, he's got the inferiority mm. factor in there, which yeah. I like. I do like that. And it's based, there's a basis of reality because Geelong were dominant, particularly pretty much the whole time Andrew Mackey was there. Yeah. I'm going to rate this about a five, I think, because it's, it's not super funny, but if you hear it, you go, oh, I can't really argue with that. Yeah, no, I agree. They probably could have won a flag just getting like two premiership points per win <laughs> in that era as well because they were eighth and still won the flag yeah, yeah. legit um, but Andrew Mackey I think you can do better than that mate you're too nice 3.8 3.8 uh, yeah fair enough yeah okay I think there's better ones to come You'd hope. I know. Come on, this video sucks. <laughs> the second one, Michael Voss, who was a triple premiership captain for Brisbane, said to his brother Brett of St Kilda, "My dad f***ed your mum last night." <laughs> <laughs> that is quality. Yeah, that is top notch. I like that. Yeah. Really getting the mind of, of the opponent as well. Oh, shit, did he? <laughs> Throw, throws the mindset off. Makes you start thinking about some disgusting things. <laughs> it would have. <laughs> How are we rating that a ten? Quite generic. I'll give that. 6.9. Really? I'm going to give that an 8. I don't think it's generic. I think it's, it's creative enough, but it's also not nasty. But then again, you know, Brett would probably just laugh at it. So, yeah. you know, not particularly brutal. So I'll give him just an 8 for that, Michael. But good work. Now, this next one is probably one of the better ones I've come across. Okay. So Chris Judd had obviously just left the West Coast Eagles to join Carlton. And I think it was the first time that he returned to Subiaco Oval to play the Eagles, who were struggling at that time. And uh, Adam Selwood was playing on Chris Judd. And he makes a point and he sort of has a go at Judd for his taped up shoulders. And Judd replies, it's because I've been carrying you guys for five years. Cut that. On a, on a few drug free players during that time period as well. Is it more <laughs> of an intellectual? I think that, uh, uh, there was a bit of thinking behind this. I wonder yeah. if it was pre-planned as well, but how do you rate it out of 10? I'll give it an eight out of 10. I like that one. Just because he's like riffing on West Coast as well. <laughs> so I like that one. Yeah, witty, funny. Rips on West Coast. I like it. I like that. And it could easily be true. Like, I think the Eagles obviously had really good midfielders in that time. It wasn't mm. all just Judd. But uh, uh, to think of that in the moment and say that to someone, yeah, I'm going to give that a nine. I think that's that's an absolute spanker. The next one's a little bit more generic. Dane Swan apparently used this to many opponent during his time at the Magpies. But he often went around saying, what time does training finish? Ah, that's another one. Hurtful. Those. Yeah. I'm not really, I'm not huge on Dane Swan's humour. To be honest, mm. I'm gonna be critical on this one. It's a bit that, that, that didn't make. Yeah, it's very bladsy. Yeah, I'm not a fan of that one. I'm gonna no. mark it down. Yeah, mark it, it down. It, it doesn't compare well to some of these better ones, but it's also not bad. Yeah, three out of ten. Collingwood were a good side as well, so yeah, there's probably a, a few opportunities for him to say that. I like this one. This is Wayne Carey. Um, apparently, when he was playing on a young opponent, uh, he would go up to the trainers in front of this player and be like, "Get me a footy record. I want to find out who this kid is." <laughs> Disrespectful. Yeah, that's a real like you have to be Wayne Carey's level to, yeah. to sort of make that joke. I'm gonna give that uh, probably a six point five. I think that that's pretty funny. Yeah, it has that inferiority uh, component that I like. I'll give. I'll, I'll agree. Six point five. And how do you how do you expect like a kid who's just been told that who's trying to do a job on Wayne Carey to then be like, no, I can beat you. 
Your teammates hate you, Wayne. Next one is Brendan Favola to Essendon's Michael Hurley. If you're still on me at halftime, I'll give you $100. I like that. That's good. Favola would have torn up that many opponents. I don't get it. Like, if you're still on me at halftime, like, your coach is going to move you off me because I'm going to kick some oh, of All right, yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah period. Six. Yeah. Yeah, five. Apparently, Steve Johnson used to go around to his opponents and say that he accepts cash or credit, and they go, to what? And he goes, to Stevie J Show. Self-indulgent. A little bit cringe. Oh, like, it's yeah. decent because he was good enough to, to yeah. sort of back that up, but I'd give that a five. Yeah, I was thinking yeah. four. This one's a real classic Barry Hall comment. He says to Jack Redden, who was pretty young at the time, he says, mate, are you old enough to have pubes yet? <laughs> You, you like that one? Because I think that's a stinker. I think that is a classic Barry Hall. Oh, that just reminds me of playing like COD back in the day, being on the mic, and older people being like, oh, you're a squeaker, bro. You've got no pubes, bro. You might think your heat's sick, but... Maybe Manscaped. Yeah, maybe. Friend of the channel. So. Maybe Barry Hall wants some pubes on his head. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Christ. <laughs> I'm going to give that a three. I like that. That made me laugh. You like that? Okay. I'm going to give that a... Eight, I reckon. Oh, wow. That's a stark <laughs> That contract. made me laugh. Yeah, that was enough. good. Apparently, Jonathan Brown once said to Mark McVeigh of the Essendon Footy Club, he said uh, he was going to eat him. He was going to threaten <laughs> him, right? And then in response, Mark McVeigh said, are we going to use the same bowl you used to get your hair cut? <laughs> <laughs> Those are both quality. I, I like that. The, yeah, the, eat him is funny, but also like I like the quick response time because yeah. he, couldn't, he couldn't have prepared that. Jonathan know? Brown has like the strongest hairline in all of AFL ever. Mm. Hey, like... Mm. That, that's never gonna go away. I will eat you. Yeah. I would believe like if, he, if yeah. Brown, Brown said that. I'm like, yeah, you probably do eat humans for your protein. <laughs> that's a snappy response. I reckon that's the best yet. Yeah. Nine point five. I mean. Yeah, yeah. I'll give I'll give that a seven point five. I can't rate it above the Judd one, but yeah. I think it's very, very witty. This one is weird, okay? Because Nick Rewalt has retold this story, and I think he sanitized it. But he basically says a teammate of mine started ripping into an opposition opposition player. He said, "Mate, what about you just partying and drinking?" How's your lifestyle going? That can't be what he said. And then the opposition player got the footy, did something awesome, and turned around and said, Hey, buddy, I'm partying all the time and still killing it. Hell I'm, yeah. I'm thinking this is more a reference to the, mate, get off the gear. Like, he, like he probably made an actual accusation about this player doing drugs. He didn't just say, <laughs> Hey, how's your lifestyle? How's all the partying going? And then he's just like... <laughs> yeah. God, sick. See, if you take it on phase value, I give that an absolute... 2 out of yeah. 10 but if if he said hey mate get off the, the gear and then he's gone around and kicked the goal and then said I you know I love the gear and I'm still kicking goal <laughs> then, then that's actually kind of funny I didn't know Ben Cousins played for St Kilda mm, he nearly did that's not a funny joke <laughs> <laughs> this one is an anecdote from Robert Murphy and this one made me laugh apparently Stephen Baker went up to him in the game and said have you got a sausage dog and he said he spent 20 minutes wandering around the field not knowing what just happened it was the most effective sledge because I couldn't play properly after that, it turns out that uh, Stephen Baker just owns the sausage dog. <laughs> <laughs> Not a sledge, completely put him up his game. G gotta give that a seven. Yeah, I like that. It's, it's funny because it works, yeah. but it, it's dumb as well. Heath Shaw was talking about what he used to do. He just used to go up to his opponents and be like, I've heard some pretty dark, grim stuff about you, mate. Like... That, that's not good and then like just puts them off like what does he know like if they have done something <laughs> yeah. wrong they go well, how does he know what, what the fuck oh or, that's good or if they haven't done anything that, it just puts them off yeah so. yeah I like that I like that oh this one is this one's probably one of my favourites because the, he's going to great lengths to make a joke and that's what I do I just completely over deliver on the joke but apparently Jonathan Brown said that Michael Voss uh, Michael Voss actually stopped the game once and he goes hey 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 and he goes to the umpire we got to stop the game. There's an Auskick player on the field and he points to Shannon Burns. <laughs> I like it because he's gone to the lengths of actually stopping the umpire yeah. right, to make the sledge. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of that Not of that one? one. Nah, if, if he had just said you're an Auskick player, not funny. But if he actually goes and stops the game, that would make me laugh. It's a he's like 45-year-old dad at the footy like yelling at a player for doing crap. Go back to Auskick yeah, five yeah. or something. I suppose. I, I do like the element of just completely over committing to the yeah, joke. Yeah, no, I like that too. I'll give it a four. Yeah, all right. I'll, I'll give that a six. Maybe it gave me a tickle. Dermot Brereton says that Rodney E uh, once went up to an umpire and says, I don't know what's going quicker, your hair or your eyesight. That's a real like boomer sort of like 80, yeah. 80s kind of level of comedy i'll give that a two man rodney Ede, you can't really throw stones when you live in a glass house either <laughs> yeah uh -huh. good point what the <laughs> fuck <Yeah. laughs> rocket could come up with something a bit better than that oh yeah but i honestly think that is just the level of his comedy <laughs> 
This one's probably the, the strangest one. Apparently an opposition player said to a guy called Paul Abbott, you have a long head, Paul. A long head? <laughs> I don't know what that means. Let's get a feature of Thank Paul. you, my queen. <laughs> Let's get a picture of Paul Abbott the VFL. I have no idea what he looks like. He does have a big jaw and a big schnoz. Yeah, yeah. His chin sticks out further than his nose. That one's weird. This one's a really strange one. This was back when uh, Brad Scott coached his last game at North Melbourne. Mm. David King, who's like, you know, a pundit, is walking on the field in his suit at three-quarter time. He's just walking past. And Brad, Brad Scott just runs past and hips and shoulders him. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah, I do. Apparently, he said, you <laughs> f***ing <laughs> Wow. That's not really... A, that's bizarre, eh? Wait, so... That's not even a sledge. It's just abuse. Brad Scott said that to David yeah, King? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. Harsh. Yeah, weird. Five. Someone salty that they're gonna <laughs> gonna lose two. their job to uh to yeah yeah, yeah. Well, but interesting I, I there was always a really like famous piece of footage but I never knew what he actually said but yeah right but yeah, yeah. yeah that's strange uh, apparently Collingwood cheer squad member once said to Gary Lyon hey mate it looks like your parents cut your hair with a knife and fork. <laughs> Decent, accurate. Funny one here from Scott Pendlebury. He says that he was once at Adelaide Oval walking the boundary and a fan yelled over the, the fence, your shit Maynard. <laughs> <laughs> this one made me laugh. This was Ben Hudson of the Western Bulldogs saying to uh, an opposition midfielder, you're almost as ugly as Robert Murphy. Robert Murphy was Ben Hudson's teammate. <laughs> <laughs> We'll end this on a witty note. Apparently Martin Pike of the Brisbane Lions, he was also at North Melbourne, um, but he was also part of the Brisbane three-peat in the early 2000s. Apparently he said to a young Jordan Lewis, son, come back to me when you've won three premierships. Now piss off. <laughs> now Jordan Lewis has gone on to win three premierships at the Hawthorne Footy Club. Uh, so that is the ultimate comeback. Yeah, well played. Who wins that one then? Oh, I'll give Jordan Lewis. Uh, yeah. Well, you can't give him points because he didn't say anything, but... Um, the Action speak louder than words, bro. Yeah, yeah. Well done, Jordan Lewis. All right, that's it, guys. That is all we have for the best AFL sledges. If there's been some that I've missed, let us know in the comments because, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's always really good fun to read. Some of them are really dumb and some of them are quite funny, but I appreciate your input. While you're here, guys, make sure you do check out the channel of my good friend Druzy here. Um, he's, you know, he's doing a real good job on YouTube and he's also the host of the Drew Footy Show every week where we analyze the week to week round. It's going to be a big month of finals coming up as well, so it'll be great to have you along for the road as well as just the tips every week. Thanks, guys. We'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.